If we think about what it means to be a Yurok person, there are kind of these pillars that hold up our identity. The river is a big one. Our language, our foods, our place on this earth. Salmon and, and anadromous fish in general are, are one of those pillars that make Yurok people Yurok people. Salmon have been around for 50 million years. They have made it through landslides and earthquakes and glaciation. The reason they're able to do this is because there are numerous populations through an unimpaired, undammed watershed. And so when we put a dam in, we cut off 400 miles of rearing and spawning habitat for these fish. And ultimately, we lose the diversity of those populations and the life history diversity for them to deal with and be resilient to change. Almost every river where there's a dam, there's a history of displacement, disruption, and putting in that infrastructure without the consent of the communities and nations whose homeland that is. When the dams went in, the uh, tribal people in the Klamath Basin were consulted. And I think that was offensive and people were uncomfortable with that and, and have been for over a hundred years. And there was always an effort and always in the back of our minds, we knew that we needed to get the dams out. We knew that they were causing you know, major issues and we knew that you can't just go and break an ecosystem in half. We're here on the Klamath River, almost immediately before the largest dam removal in the world. First and foremost, we are interested in how dam removal changes the ecology of the ecosystem. We work really closely with the Yurok and Karuk tribes, and we sample water chemistry, temperature, and then aquatic insects. So we have four years now of baseline data we've been able to collect, which is really exciting, and we'll plan to collect data at least for four years after the dam removal too and compare the two. Building up to this, there were a lot of different thoughts about what would happen with dam removal. And there's a lot of uncertainty with that. And so I think we're in a great place to be able to put the information in place, tell that story accurately, learn from it, build on it, and build momentum for river restoration throughout California. Today, we're working with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Yurok tribe as they're moving downstream, taking samples from salmon carcasses and collecting otoliths for our climate dam removal project. Otoliths are like these mini little data loggers, and we can use the microchemistry of those otoliths to tell us the habitats that those fish have used throughout the basin and get a really nice idea for what tributaries are using, how long they're in the main stem, when they hit the ocean, all of that. This is a super unique moment in time. I feel so happy to be a small part in this large project with all these partners and to be able to watch landscape level change happen for our environment. So here we are at the precipice of a giant monumentous effort. We're gonna have Fall Run Chinook swimming right on by where they haven't been able to get in decades, if not a century. You know, tribal people were laughed out of the room when we were advocating for dam removal 20 years ago. I think that's the biggest takeaway is just, is hope. There's hope on the horizon and look to the Klamath. This basin is so diverse geographically and culturally from one end to the other, but we somehow managed to pull everyone together and to make this happen. I think another really important lesson is just the power of the tribal advocacy of the different nations who continue to show up at the tables and boardrooms all around the world. Just to say enough is enough. Here's the impacts on our peoples, our homelands, our watersheds, our fisheries. A step like this, removing four large dams on the Klamath River is obviously important from a cultural and spiritual and economic perspective, but it's also really important for the ecology. 
and really important for salmon themselves. Of all the things that we could do for salmon, promoting access to headwater habitat, to cold water, to pristine waters in some cases, like the headwaters above Upper Klamath Lake, is basically the best thing we could do at this point.